everybody. This is Courtney Benjamin, music publisher and artist manager. Uh, this is Ron Dixon, uh, aka Ron D, uh, music producer, film composer, and uh, music business development. So today we got we got the amazing uh, digitalradiotracking.com. We got the uh, the owner, one of the owners, uh, chatting with us today. And you know how we always um, uh, try to embed in you guys about getting your stuff monitored. Uh, you know, getting everything, getting getting all that business in order. So, you know, without further ado, I would like to bring to you Digital Radio Track. Oh, thank you, yes, sir. Oh yeah, I further appreciate you, Ron and, and Courtney, for having having us out this evening. You know, and hopefully, there's a lot of great things going to come out of this call. Um, you know, there's a lot of words been getting out about DRT and. And that's what we're here to do tonight is really just answer, answer those questions, make sure that your viewers and people that are engaged in what you guys are doing really understand the value and importance of getting there, making sure their music is monitoring, how it works, how do they monetize it, you know, what's the benefits, you know, does it make sense, is it good for them? Even with broadcasters, you might, you guys might have some stations that are listening and saying, hey, look, why should I be monitored? You know, what difference does it make? I play music, we play what we want to play. You know, so these are all the types of things that are going to come out this call, and we want to make sure that we want to leave your viewers and your listeners uh, to tonight's show and things. We want to make sure that they take something away. Definitely, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So, um, tell us a little bit about your company and um, and 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 specifically what you do in the industry. Well, I, I found it. You know, I, I have a little more extensive background. I know we only have but so much time on on this call. But to give you a short version, um, I've been in the music industry for 28 years, um, going on 29. So I've been in it for quite a long time. Um, I actually come from a uh, publicity promotion background, as well as an artist management background. I managed artists for 25 years uh, of, my, of my 28 years in the industry. Uh, retired from that a few years ago and kind of focused a little bit more on what I have going on now, which is Digital Radio Tracker. Um, we still have the marketing company. Uh, a lot of people know me from, you know, my radio background. I've been doing radio promo for, for all 28 years uh, as well. Worked with a lot of successful artists, broke a lot of records over the years. And, um, and so we kind of have migrated and transitioned in the course of that. So back in, in 2011, um, I, I saw a void in the industry. Um, I saw things kind of moving a little bit as we moved from, you know, MP3 downloads to streaming and the way technology was evolving. And I said, well, you know, what's going on in this digital radio world? Because what, what I started noticing was a lot of the music we were working was, was starting to get broke online. It wasn't even at regular traditional radio. But what I happened to notice is, is nobody was monitoring it. There was no way of finding out. When you put an MP3 or you leak it out on Facebook or social media or you share it with DJs or record pools, nobody's tracking the music. It's going all over the world now. So it's not just about the local airplay. It's about global airplay. And so we started calling our friends at, at Nielsen, at MediaBase, all the very regular monitoring companies. We guys said, hey, look, you guys want to you know, take a stab at this. You know, who's, who's monitoring this? How do we find out what's going on with our music? And everybody's basically saying, well, you know, that's, hey, you know what, we're, we're about terrestrial FM, nobody's listening to internet radio, we don't care about that, that's going nowhere. Now, mind you, now, this is back then. And, uh, you know, so during that time, obviously, streaming has gotten bigger, every, the internet's gotten bigger, everything has gotten more online. Um, so once we kind of got the door shut on us, we said, okay, well, you know what, well, we're a marketing company. We want to be able to better serve our clients, which means we got to prove to them that they're getting airplay, that the work that we're doing is really happening. So we started developing our own internal software to be able to track, you know, the songs for our clients and be able to let them know, hey, you're getting spins over here and over here and over there. And what we started to find out was all of our friends in the industry started calling saying, hey, can we get information on this record? Can we get information on that record? Because you guys are trying to. And so we said, okay, well, well, you know what? Let's turn it into a business. And therefore, DRT was born. So we decided to, to, to actually launch and make it public for everyone to be able to enjoy and benefit from. So 
And through that time, digital radio has evolved more and more and more. So now you have more than 100,000 online broadcasters around the globe. The other angle is we started looking at the amount of music, especially from here in America, that's being played overseas. And people aren't collecting mm -hmm. royalties. People don't have any awareness of it, um, you know, and things. We wanted to be able to give what we call a voice to the unheard. We wanted to make sure that, hey, you know what? Uh, stations in Russia, stations in India, especially in Africa, Mexico. These are territories that no one in the world but us are monitoring, that play a lot of great music, that are that you got royalties being left on the table because people, they can't prove it. So DRT was born to kind of come in and say, hey, wait a minute, we can't track everybody, but we can be a voice for that unheard. We can be able to be that voice for that, maybe that new and developing artist that's on the verge of breaking that nobody's paying attention to because nobody knew they were getting that much play. So therefore we had to create charts. So all of these types of things kind of evolved over the years to bring us to where we're at now. So now we're building a strong community of broadcasters. We're helping a lot of the independent labels, a lot of the new and developing artists that are doing just that. It's, we're in a DIY society now. That's what this music industry is. We are in a global music industry, but now it's about clicking the mouse button. A lot of artists and a lot of independent labels, they're working their own music now. So they need to know what is going on with their music. Where is it being played at? What happened with that music that I leaked? Because what started to take place was you can send a, an MP3 to a DJ friend and say, hey, can I get some feedback on this? But you might not have known, he might have sent it to a hundred of his friends and they may have shared it with other people. And before you know it, your music has gone all over the world and you're sent to one person. So that's the kind of society that we're in now. So there has to be companies like DRT that says, hey, you know what? We don't have any skin in the game. We don't own any of these stations. We don't, uh, you know, these aren't none of our artists. So it's not about any of those types of manipulation things that go on in the industry. What it's about is good, clean, all unadulterated data. It's saying, hey, look, if you got 100 spins on this song, that's what this song is getting. If you got a thousand spins on a song, that's what you're getting. That's why a lot of people look at the DRT charts and they say, wait a minute, why does this look a little different from all the other charts that exist? And that is because we are giving an open playing field, what we call it. We're saying, look, wait a minute, we're going to take everybody's voice and we're going to give everybody that equal opportunity to be able to say, hey, look, this is what we want to play. This is what's going on. So now, the independents that are sitting here breaking a lot of new music that may be a new and developing artist that's really on the rise that may not be getting played on your most popular FM terrestrial stations that are predominantly controlling a lot of the charts that we're all familiar with. Now they're saying, wait a minute, I got a voice now. I got a way for people to know that I exist, that I am somebody, that I am the next Jay-Z, the next Eminem, the next Cardi B, the next whoever, because they're saying, wait a minute, you know, that the work effort that I got going on online and my music is being played, there's somebody that's saying, I am somebody. And that's what DRT is about. Man, that's a blessing right there, man. Cause like that, that's like, like, like you, you hit the nail on the, uh, for the, uh, for the, uh, for, uh, for the second question, man. Cause I was going to say like, what's the benefits of it, um, of, of getting your uh, music monitored and everything. Cause like, like, we got songs that are playing in Burger Kings in India, airports in India, and things like that. And it's just like, man, you never know where this music is going to take you. So it's always good to have you a, a good, strong monitoring system, you know, such as DRT to uh, to take up that, you know, so you could maximize on getting all your royalties because this this money is just sitting out there, and you know, exactly. it, some some of it goes into a black box account, you know, if, if you don't claim it, but. Exactly. And somebody and exactly, Courtney. And that's one of the things that we like to emphasize with DRT. You mentioned about benefits. Um, a lot of people think about it like this. When you know that your music is being played in Germany, in Australia, in Spain, what can you do? You can monetize that. You can go in and do shows in those markets. You can go in and sell merchandise in those markets. You can go in and do other licensing deals in those markets, those territories. You're building numbers. You're building a fan base. But without that information, you don't even have a clue. So a yeah. lot of people have been writing us and they're saying, hey, wait a minute, I didn't even know I was getting played in Japan until I got a DRT report. I didn't know I was getting played in Australia. And they were so busy worried about their local market here in America. 
I'm like, wait a minute, there's a lot of money being left on the table. Like you mentioned, royalties that's not being collected, shows that aren't being booked. All of these are types of benefits that you need to connect with like DRT, get those reports. If you're getting airplay, find out what's going on. But one of the things that's great about what we're offering is we understand, like I said, I come from an artist management background. I know what it's like, you know, for managers and artists, when you're hungry, and you're just trying to be heard. You're trying to get your music exposed. What we decided to do was we decided to take all of the voids that was in the industry. And we decided to develop DRT in a whole different way. We're the only company in the world that offers a free searchable database. What that means is any other company, you're going to have to pay them to access their database. What DRT does is say, hey, no, you can access it for free. So Ron and Courtney, you've got an artist right now. You can go to digiradiotracker.com, get them to form an account. You can log into that account for absolutely free. Put that artist's name in the search box. And if it comes up, we got airplay on it. If it doesn't come up, there's no airplay. I Completely free. You didn't spend a dime. So unlike other companies where you may have to purchase, well, no, you will have to purchase that report. But what it is, what if that report is blank? What if you don't have any airplay? Well, you just bought a blank piece of paper, man. And that, that's a quick way to aggravate somebody, right? So we yeah. looked at that and we said, well, wait a minute. No, we're about the people. We're a people brand. We want to make sure that, you know what, if you're going to patronize DRT, it's a risk-free. We're the only company in the world, the only monitoring company that it's risk-free. You don't have to buy. So if you happen to get a blank report, which you, you really can't, but if you happen to, you're going to get credit. You're going to be able to, to get other reports and so forth. So you don't have to walk away feeling like, hey, I spent $19 for a report and it was blank. Whereas in these other monitoring companies, you can spend as much as from $100 to $200 for a report and they don't care whether it's blank or not. So that's just one example of what we've done with DRT that we took from the industry and we said, wait a minute. We're not, these are the little guys that are predominantly out here doing this. The DIY artists, the independent label, they may not have the budgets to throw away. Now look at the flip side of it. You do a search, you find that there is current airplay on it. What are you going to want to do? Load your account up, get that DRT report and look at those analytics. Be able to see your spin patterns, be able to see where you're getting played at, be able to do follow-up because you may be able to set up interviews, do shows, all of these types of things by now having information that makes sense that you can now monetize. So those are just some of the benefits from the artist standpoint or, or artist management standpoint. But what about the standpoint of a broadcaster, an independent broadcaster? Why should they be monitored? What's the benefit of it? Well, first of all, you wanna be in a community of other stations because it's that push and pull that allows you to be able to grow your station's listeners. There's a lot of education that monitored stations get from us. We teach them how to grow their listenership, which does that mean? Be able to, for the station to be able to make more money from advertisers, sponsorships, and so forth, because they have more listeners about the numbers. We also <laughs> teach them how to monetize their station in terms of promotional support from independent artists and labels, and even major labels, of course. Hmm. So then there's the value of being monitored versus non-monitored. Now that station, think about it. If you have an independent station and you're breaking, say, Cardi B's new single up that drops tomorrow, you're the first one to play it. You're going to show up on her sheet. Now, when the label Atlantic Records looks at Cardi B's DRT report, they're going to say, wait a minute, XYZ, Courtney Station's playing it, Ron Station's playing it, this station's playing it. What are they going to do? Go, you know what? We need to work with them. There needs to be promotional support for those stations. These stations are the ones breaking the new music and so forth. But if you're not monitored nobody knows what you're playing right so sure. it, it becomes more of the best kept secret not just that so you can take that information and you can then be able to monetize it and leverage it toward independent promotional accounts and so forth so it's a lot of angles that even a radio station why you'd want to be a monitored station versus a non-monitored so those are just a few a few simple ways just to throw out there that can benefit yeah, yeah, man, that's 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 really dope too, man. Cause um, cause like a, a lot of a lot of independent artists, they don't understand the the power of analytics, and 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 that's that's what you guys provide. You provide in that analytic um, point of view of of um, you know, and, and, and kind of bringing it, it's it's kind of like having that 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 focus group and telling you like, okay, this is this is where we need to 
place our attention on. You know what I'm saying? And that's where you put your marketing dollars and not just waste your money on doing a whole bunch of Facebook ads targeting people that you don't that you don't even know that's uh, listening to you. Exactly. Why wouldn't you want to support where the love is? We call it go where the go where the go where the love is. Don't go where you hate it and try to make them love it. And that's what a yeah. lot of people don't look at is they say, hey, you know what? If you're getting played in China, then focus some of those other marketing dollars in social media and ads and different things. In China, it's going to make more sense. Be able to tap into where that love is versus you over here spending those resources in a territory just because you like the city doesn't mean yeah. that those people are feeling your music. So. Those analytics, like you said, is very, very important, but there's also a lot of other analytics that are good to look at through DRT reports, because what you want to do is um, a company, say, for example, uh, a company gets a feature and you might have spent X amount of dollars getting XYZ artists to feature on that song. Well, mm -hmm. Digital Radio Tracker is the only monitoring company in the world that separates versions. I don't know if you guys are aware of that or not. So wow. it's never been done before. That's why we said we took every void that was in the industry and we said, no, we're going to make it even better. So you have companies, like I said, our friends at Nielsen, Media Bay, these are all great, wonderful people. It's they do it what we call the analog way. Unfortunately, um, they can't separate the version. So when you get a report from the other monitoring companies, it's only going to show up under one artist. And so you have no way of knowing you might've spent $50,000 on that feature. And you don't even know if, if all these radio stations are playing with the version with the feature or the, ver or the original version of the song without the feature. And you don't know if you made, you know, if you made the right decision or what, but with DRT, we offer DRT comprehensive reports for $29, very affordable. And for $29, you can not just see what time of day the song was played, you can also see what version was played. So mm -hmm. now you can see if there's a screwed and chopped version. You can see if there's a, a remix done by DJ such and such. You can see if there's a featuring uh, uh, Cardi B, uh, uh, Nicki Minaj remix, or featuring Beyonce remix, or just the artist by themselves. So that was something we saw in the music industry that's been lacking forever. And we said, no, we want to come up with a way that we can separate those versions to the best of our ability to be able to give our clients some kind of idea. So that's just one simple analytic way that's really priceless. Um, and that can actually save a company a lot of money, or it can also, like I said, direct them in their marketing path to be able to say, wait a minute, this, this is working. We can not just see what markets we're getting played in to know where it's working at, but we can also see if the features and things are working. So these are the things that we're doing at DRT that's innovative, that we're, we're trying to take what's already there and we're trying to say, wait a minute, how can we take it a step further? Because just think about it, fellas, 20 years ago, who would have thought, not just we're on Zoom right now, but who would have thought we would be consuming music from a refrigerator? Think about that. Yeah, you know, real. now you have smart refrigerators, smart TVs, you have smart speakers. Right now, there's over 120 million cars on the road that, that have digital radio in it. You, I don't even know if you can buy a car now that has CD player in it. A lot of things have changed. So people have to get and understand that times are evolving now. So you have to change the way you think. You have to change the way you move. That's what we say at DRT. We move differently. So everything that we do, it's not that we're better than anyone else is that we want to try to take things to that next level. We want to be able to be innovative enough to say, hey, wait a minute, we're, we're not just today, we're also your tomorrow. So that's what we're trying to bring to the table. That's what we're trying. We're not trying to put anybody out of business. We're just trying to say we move differently here. We want to be an addition. We don't want to be an or. We call it, we're, our service partners, we're competition to no one, value for everyone. And that's what we do is we want to bring value to the music industry that we all love. This is the business of music. It's not the music business. That's a street slang term. And if you talk to anybody that's in the music industry, that's how they'll say it. This is the business of music. So it, it, it has a lot to do with who you're around. It has a lot to do with the perspective that you have and your upbringing in the music industry so you understand. Because I tell people all the time, 
There's many people around the music industry, but there's very few people in the music industry. And that's the big difference. Mm. That was a good game. <laughs> Real. So uh, and, and as far as like uh, music placements, do you guys uh, have a, have a uh, service or provide a, a way to, to, uh, to capture, like say if, um, if my trailer is playing uh, over in India or something like that, or or anything like that, for uh, as far as the music placement side on uh, movies, TV, uh, film. That's, that's a great, a great question, and we get questions like that all the time. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're still growing, like a lot of you know other monitoring sources. Um, what you're talking about is like sync licensing, different things mm -hmm. that may be going on that is a little bit different. Um, and there are companies out here that do some of those trackings. And like I said, one of the things that we wanted to do was be able to offer different things. Um, we plan on being the first monitoring company in the world. And I'll just release it out on this show um, that we plan on monitoring sermons, plan on monitoring DJ mixes. There's a lot of things that we've noticed in the industry that are voids that aren't happening at all. What I mean by monitoring a DJ mix, let me give you this example. What's happening now is people aren't giving the DJs credit for their mixes. So a DJ may create a 15 minute mix. What happens is when those songs are played, the artist is getting credit for it. The DJ is nowhere to be found. What DRP is going to do is we're going to monitor DJ mixes. So in other words, if it's DJ Courtney Benjamin, and this is his 15 minute traffic jam mix, your show may be syndicated on 20 different stations. DRT is going to track that for you and let you know that these 20 stations are playing your 15 minute mix. We're going to put you in the position to monetize your mix because that is your creativity. You deserve to be paid for it, even though you may be playing Drake, Beyonce, Cardi B in your mix. But with the way things are now, though, it's the reverse. All of those songs that you're playing are the ones that benefit. All Courtney Benjamin gets is maybe a paycheck from the stations that, have, uh, that they're using your mix. You see what I'm getting at? So there's no real yeah. royalties being generated. So these are different aspects of the industry that we want to help improve, that we see as voids within the industry, that we know there's a lot of players out here that are losing a lot of money, but they're the ones doing all the work. So we want to level some of the playing field a little bit and say, hey, wait a minute, it's a little hilly over here. Let's balance this out a little bit and let some of these brothers out here get some credit and sisters get some credit for the work and creativity that they're doing. Because until that's given, it's going to be very hard for a Courtney Benjamin to maybe get that syndicated show offer throughout some of the major radio networks and things. See, but having those reports, you're going to be able to say, hey, wait a minute, XYZ Network, my show is being streamed on 20 stations i've got 1.3 million listeners and so forth now it's a little bit different when you're at the interview table because it's not just hey i got a show check me out listen to my air check wait a minute no it's you're coming with real analytics real stats and real proof that's what drt is we are a third party we don't own the stations we don't own the music none of that stuff we don't we don't own the record labels so we have no skin in the game so if we say it's getting played 10 spins over here, we don't have to manipulate it. We don't, there's no incentive for us to. So if it's getting played 10 spins over here, we're going to then take that. Here it is. You're getting 10. And it's cut and dry. That's what a lot of people like about it, whether it be advertised, sponsors, is they know they're going to, that if your station is monitored, that there's a third party that can kind of validate or verify that, hey, you know what? What you're telling us is true is really happening. Because nobody's listening to radio stations 24-7, 365. You can't. It's not even humanly possible. You got to sleep, right? You got to, something has to change. So the whole reality is, is that for there to be a company that's listening and logging all of that, and then you can see 24-7, 365, anytime you want, sit and look at those analytics and say, hey, what is that song doing? It's a blessing. Now, to answer your question, just like retail radio, there's companies out here that track that. So like I mentioned earlier, DRT wants to be added value. We don't want to get in and start competing with all these different companies. Hey, we track the Burger Kings. We track the Walmarts. We track the Best Buys. They're playing music and so forth. There's already guys doing stuff like that. So we want to come in and we want to carve a niche. 
we want to say, hey, and of course, our niche is digital streaming radio. We've been hollering about, I've been in the digital streaming radio game since 2008. DRT didn't come around until 2011. So I had a few years of dibble dabbling in it as a radio promoter saying, hey, what's going on here? People really breaking music online, getting to know some of the stations and so forth. And I said, okay, hey, wait a minute. Now there's a, there's a voice here, they matter. You know, so whereas back then, a lot of people would say nobody's listening. I can give you 10 stations right now. I got more than 15,000 or 25,000 people listening a week, guaranteed. These are solid internet online shows. It doesn't sound like a lot. That is a lot. And a lot of music is being broken and exposed. You can't deny those people. And that's what a lot of people try to do. And we all know what's happening in society as a whole, but that's what it's about. It's about muffling a lot of the voice. It's about saying, hey, wait a minute, that's irrelevant over here. And we say, well, wait a minute, hold on a second here. What you might call is irrelevant to somebody else. That's how they feed their family. So yeah. it becomes a whole different animal. You see what I'm saying? So that's what DRT is about. It's about trying to help level the playing field. At the same time, we're not trying to, to challenge anyone or be competition to anyone. Is we're just trying to say, hey, we're just trying to help some of that, that undertone. You know, give them a little bullhorn to say, hey, wait a minute. I'm here. I exist. I'm real. Check my station out. You know, don't just worry about this guy here because he's on the biggest station in town and there's 100,000 people listening. Hey, everybody's got to start somewhere, right? I mean, that same guy, now you have it where, hey, I got my own podcast. I got my own internet station. I'm able to go and create my own base. And some of those guys, look at what we're seeing happening now in this pandemic. Some of those same guys from those top stations are now coming back down a little bit saying, hey, wait a minute. I don't know if I got my job tomorrow. Let me make sure... I got a voice still. So let me start me a little online station and get things going. And we're getting calls every day from a lot of these guys. Hey, man, can, can I be monitored? I, I got to get this going because I don't know if they're going to let me go tomorrow. So it's, it's, the times are changing now. So we have to start learning to look at things differently. And that's kind of what me and Ron was talking about earlier before we got on the call tonight is there's so many different things that have evolved in the music industry when it comes to marketing, branding promotion it's very different now we got social media 25 years ago there wasn't no social media like that you know back then with black planet and in my space <laughs> was the start of this stuff right but yeah. now it's just evolved into so i mean every time you turn around now you got what clubhouse i mean i every time i, I hear about something new i'm like <laughs> wait a minute man i'm still trying to grow my followers over here but that's the way the world is it's evolving so you have to determine how engaging you want to be so that's what we're trying to do with DRTs. We're trying to be a bridge to try to connect some of the independent labels, some independent artists, some of these independent stations. And we're trying to bring them together and say, hey, you can have a voice now. Now you can be heard on a much larger scale because what we're going to do at DRT is we're putting your voice out globally, whereas you might have only had a local voice. I told this to one station the other day. I said, look, just think about it. If you're showing up on all these sheets, you've got artists from Africa with the new Afrobeat movement growing like crazy. You got all of these different things that are happening all over the world. What do you think they're going to do when they come to your small town? If they're on tour or they come here to America, they're going to remember you. You're to, to them, you are that hot 97. You are that power 106. <laughs> you are that hot 107 in Atlanta. You know, you are that to them. Because you gave them a shot, because you were breaking their music, you were first to play, you this, you that. Th there's value in that, you know, and this is how you sell it to even your advertisers. And I even told the guy like this, I said, look, don't you have local advertisers on your stage? He said, yeah, I got the local soul food restaurant, local car dish, I got this, I got that. And I said, just think about it. If you're playing this guy's music from Australia, he's coming over here and coming through that city, what is he going to do? Probably go eat at that soul food restaurant that he heard on your station. These are ways that your little station that you want to say is insignificant. You're actually helping stimulate the economy in your local economy. So that's a major benefit that you are doing as a small independent broadcaster that you think is insignificant to that guy. You're everything. You're his voice there. So that's what we try to do at DRT is we try to tell everyone that you have an equal voice. It's not about this station's got more listeners. It's not about this station is bigger. This station has more personalities. This station's got more, more famous people on it. it. Has nothing to do with that. 
is we're saying, no, wait a minute, when you pull a DRT report, you're going to see a hot 97 type station and you're going to see a Joe Blow radio as well. And then we're going to also combine that data and say, hey, look, when we put that chart together, there's going to be also a chart panel that says, hey, look, this is what's going on out here. That's why a lot of times you look at our top 20, you might, you might be liable to see an independent artist get in the top 100 of the major art because we're allowing that. Whereas other charts say, hey, wait a minute, no, no, we're going to block that information out if they even have it, or we're going to say that's irrelevant. And we're over here saying, well, wait a minute, no, that, that's the next big thing y'all need to know about. So one of the things that we do with, with, uh, with our charts is we've added the Spotify and Apple Music links to it. We've done it for the last several years because a lot of people are using the DRT charts for what we call new music discovery. So they're actually going through this and wait a minute. The number one artist on, on, on DRT this week is Looney Baby out of Milwaukee with this drill record with King Vaughn. I never heard of him. Who's that? Let me check it out. Let me click on the Spotify. Let me click on the album. Let me hear some of his music. And you never know. There's been label deals offered. There's been record deals offered. There's been distribution. There's been, been licensing deals. There's been all kinds of things just literally because you was on the DRT charts. You know, it's, it's crazy. And what is even starting to happen uh, I was just reading a, a music industry trade called Cashbox. A lot of people aren't f as familiar in this generation because Cashbox was the big trade magazine before Billboard. And, <laughs> um, and you know, at the time it was Cashbox and r and and Gavin Report and, and then Billboard became strong. Billboard has been around forever, but um, Cashbox magazine uses the DRT charts. They actually print the DRT charts in the magazine. So it's kind of like when you get Billboard, you see the Nielsen charts because Nielsen's a part of Billboard. And, and then, like I said, those are our friends there and that's great. You know, well, we got Cashbox. Cashbox is using DRT charts, but what does that mean? What does that mean for Courtney and Ron's artists? Is that, hey, if you're on those DRT charts, you're also getting press, you're getting PR, you're getting exposure that you can't even pay for. Because if you call them up, they gonna tell you, hey, look, you want to run an ad, it's gonna cost you X, Y, Z amount of dollars. Well, you're already there because you're on the DRT chart. So there's a lot of things that we're doing um, that we are partnering up. Like we're recently have partnered up with the Recording Academy. I mean, everybody knows the Grammys. You know, we are trying to help them improve and build their membership and, and do that drive because there's a lot of independent artists and independent labels and things that aren't even a part of the Recording Academy. What does that mean? They're not voting on who wins the Grammy. What does that mean? They're not even voting on who's getting nominated for a Grammy. But what is everybody doing? Complaining. Well, how come they don't have this artist and that artist? Well, how can you holler about inclusion if you're not a part of something? Damn. And that's why, why we're trying to help bridge that gap. So those are just some more added benefits as uh, to follow through with your question, Courtney, there on <laughs> some of the extra value things that a lot of people aren't even thinking about. Yeah. And and that and and, and artists, please uh, pay attention to what he was saying too. Like even even with the with the tour markets, you know, um, sometimes you 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 don't think the little guy or or the little station is a, uh, is the big impact, but when you got somebody that's monitoring that and and uh, and pushing that, and like you say, you get you getting all this free press and and all of this, all these other great things that's coming with getting your music monitored. You know, and 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 partnering up with uh, with the right people, and doing the right things, and taking care of business because, true, because like some of them them B and C markets and touring, true, you'll make a killing off of that. You know, you you will always have a repeat, come you know uh, a a repeat tour, and 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 just have a whole new following that, you know, you may not be known over here and and uh in in a big market, but true, you got consistent income that you can that you can depend on every year. If you and run that tour, we always call like, would you rather be a big fish in a small pond or do you want to go into a, you know, a big pond and be a little fish? You know, everybody's different, you know, but I explain it in this way is I always say, you know what, you got to get to a thousand before you get to 10,000, before you get to a hundred thousand. We all want the millions, but that's the steps that you need to take in progression. So if you only got a couple thousand followers on social media, well, focus on getting to 10,000. Give yourself a little benchmark, something that you can reach to a goal. And then when you get to that stage, you know what? Go to the next stage. You know, but what it is, is we all want that instant gratification. What is it? That microwave thing, right? We want it yeah. now. 
You know, that's the big thing about the millennial generation. Man, I have heard that word so many times. Like, what in the world? They, I, I need to be on the radio now. I'm like, hold on a minute. Did you, did you, is the record mixed and mastered right? I mean, yeah, what, what right we got here? Is it registered? Is it encoded? Is it this? Is it that? I mean, you got your paperwork right. But they want it now because they're jumping up and down in the studio. And I said, well, hold on a minute. You, you know, that kind of thinking is exactly why you're going to be catching the bus. You know, it's yeah. exactly why you're not going to be getting your proper royalties, why this isn't going to be happening. That's, man. And we try to educate them a little bit. Hey, man, slow down a second. Take a deep breath. Because we always say a hit record today will be a hit record tomorrow. Yeah. So, so it is what it is. So you sitting there saying you got a hit, well, then what's the rush? Mm -hmm. Make sure that you build and grow and develop your fan base build a strong foundation you can build an empire on that baby at that point but what so many people do is they want to build it on sand we know how that story goes oh yeah <laughs> and see you brought up oh, a good yeah. point um but you said earlier not to repeat what we talked about but i was thinking about as you were speaking about going back to the small radio stations that put you on when you was a small artist like an, and you were you was bringing up the restaurant um you know, kind of bringing up, uh, if, if they were to go to that small town, they might end up going to that restaurant. Well, not only will they go to that restaurant, but when they swing back in town, they're going to go to that radio station, that small station. Now, what if that artist blew up by the time, you know, from the time that he went there the first time, he's going to want to go back, you know, pay his dues, be like, look, man, I appreciate you doing this or doing that. It could have been the next Drake come through and be like, look, how did he know about this station? He knew about the station because this was the first station that put him on. Now that's going to bring more people to the city, more people that want to come to that station. And like you said, it's going to spark the economy in that local market because the artist was a local artist when he first came. Now he's on a bigger scale. And when he comes back, people are going to wonder like, oh, why is, why is Drake coming to whatever, Nebraska? You know what I mean? Because this is, what, this is the station that put him on before he was, you know, he was just Aubrey or whatever. So you just kind of, those are the type of things that, what I'm saying is I agree with what you're saying. And that's, that's dope. I do got a question though. So, I know you guys help with the uh, overseas market as well. I've done some projects and stuff overseas. Do you guys, does this, does somebody who actually lives overseas in Japan or Australia, would they be able to use um, digital radio tracker as well? To track some of that? That's a great question. Yeah, DRT is global. We're actually going to be setting up offices in the United Kingdom, uh, Africa, mm -hmm. and Australia uh, in the near future. That's in the plans where we want people to be more educated, more accessible. Obviously, with the founders, myself, and, and the partners involved, we're all based here in America. So we're going to be doing a lot of activity here in America. Obviously, everybody here in America is going to be knowing about us versus more overseas, where especially right now during a pandemic, you know, you're not working events and conferences and things over there. Getting the education out is a little bit more difficult to do. Um, you know, right now I'm doing a, a lot of press um, you know, and that's, that's helping during these times and stuff, doing things like, you know, you guys zoom call and different things where that's all we can do during this time is continue to get the word out. Um, we're in the midst of a big PR campaign. We got blessed. Um, you know, we, we've done something that I, I haven't even never seen before. Uh, we're featured on 26 magazine covers right now. Um, you know, anywhere from two to 10 page spreads in each. Um, that's a, that's something that, unheard of i mean even a lot of major artists have never been on that many covers at one time and we're talking about within a three-month period um you know so there's a lot of people like you got like you guys you know want to get the word out understand what we're doing understand the value of what drt is bringing to the table and the benefits and saying hey wait a minute how can we work together it could be something simple as doing like this zoom call is how do we get the word out to bless and help people and so we've been running with that and it's been one thing after another, after another, I've done, man, I'm, I'm doing two, three magazine interviews a week and stuff. Unfortunately, you know, with the pandemic going on, you're not able to do photo shoots and things like traditionally, but Hey, you know what we did our own little internal photo shoot here. You know what? Here's some photo assets. Let's put something together. And all of a sudden all these magazines started sending covers. I mean, it just, this stuff was crazy. And, um, and I say that to say to lead into what your question is, is that, all of these types of things is what's helping us get the word out internationally because obviously like we're talking about we're in the global music industry now everything is online so we've got over 50 blog posts and articles and things going on getting that education out it's a process so even with us a growing and developing company it's the same thing parallel with an artist you've got to, you're trying to build your brand you are a brand you want to build yourself as big as you can because 
I'm going to say it. A lot of people don't think about this. Just imagine the amount of people that are eating off of a Beyonce, off of a Jay-Z, off of a Drake. Nobody's talking about all of these people. So think about it that, <laughs> hey, wait a minute. It's not just the superstar behind the mic. There's a legacy of people that yep. are, you know what? Hey, man, they pray to God every night that that person doesn't happen to them. They don't get this COVID and die or anything or whatever's going on because that's how they feed their family. And people don't realize that. They, you may only hear one person and that may be the names that we talk about. But one of the things I always like to add and pay homage to is all of the people that are a part of that person's success. There's no one of us that broke any particular arts. There's no one of us that did any one thing. And anybody that says they're the ones that did this, they're lying. They're lying. It, 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 it takes a mountain of people to have, when you have that kind of level of success. We were talking the other day about a Beyonce. Well, you know, Beyonce can sell records and don't have to put a record on the radio anymore. Yeah, but they don't look at that. She's got decades, decades of support, decades of support of at radio, a lot of hits to be able to say, hey, wait a minute, you know, um, hey, wait a minute, I don't have to. I got a fan base that's not going anywhere and can sell music. So some people say, well, I can sing better than her. That doesn't mean you're gonna outsell her just because you may be able to sing better than her. Has nothing to do with that. You still gotta pay your dues. That's something a lot of people don't talk about in the music industry is paying your dues, is understanding that there's a lot of people that was before you that opened those doors. A lot of people that the blood, sweat and tears that say, hey, you know what, man, you know, I'm thankful you was able to get that ring. I'm thankful you was able to see the light of day of that placement. Because people don't even realize it ain't easy to get these placements out here. You man, talk about really video sense. game placements, movies, all these Bro. types of things. You know what? I don't care how good your music is. The music industry, it's about relationships. I know yep. somebody right now is getting placements left and right in, in, in independent unknown artists getting music placed in all kinds of movie soundtracks and stuff. And, and you never heard of her. You never heard of her. I'll be honest, she ain't never been on radio. She ain't never, I mean, she ain't got nothing going on, but she got a ton of placements. And that's because of relationships. She got yeah. the right relationships. That's all I can tell you. Outplacing everybody. And, you know, and that's what people aren't realizing that all, you got to create a balance. So it's, it's one hand, that's why I say it's the business of music. It's not the music business. Because if you call it the music business, music is first. Mm. Not the business. It's the business of music. The business is first. It's the music at the end of the day. Meaning you take care of all the business. If your music is good at the end of the day, now you'll see the hit manifest. Mm. But it was the business that made the record happen. See, people don't realize that hits are never produced, hits are made. There's not one hit record out here that's been produced, but there's very few people, like I said earlier, in the music industry that would talk like I just talked, that would say what I just said, because they've experienced it, they understand it. So while everybody's jumping up and down in the studio, I got the next one, I got the next one. What do you still have to do is go make it. You gotta go make it. See, you thinking you in the studio, we done made a hit. No, you started the start yep. of a hit record. You didn't make it yet. And that goes for even a, 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 an established artist. A good example, we'll take, take Cardi B. Single come out tomorrow, call up. That's not a hit single. How can you say it's a hit single? It's, it's an established artist releasing a new song. We don't have a crystal ball here. We don't know if next week nobody's going to want it. Nobody's going to, nobody's receiving it. No radio station want to play. We don't know that. You just want to assume, well, it's Cardi B, man, a record going to blow up. There's a lot of songs that these major artists put out that flop that don't do as well as they think it's going to do. You would hope. Now, sure, because of the establishment of their brand, they have a head start. They have a lot of friends in the industry. They got a lot of DJs that are, are like their music, that support their music and so forth. So they have a head start, but it doesn't necessarily mean they have a hit. There's a big difference there. So we always try to tell people, you want to produce good music. Just continue to put good music out there. You'll eventually get you a hit. But understand this, it's got to be made. 
there's not one hip song out here that wasn't made. And if somebody tells you, oh, I produced that in my basement and it done sold 10 million records and we didn't spend a dime, they're lying. Yeah, for real. They're lying. <laughs> Period. They're lying. They don't know. They're dreaming. They, you got to wake them up because they don't realize this business is very real. It's the business of music. Business is what? About money. Another word for business, when they say, you know, we patronize your business or we want you to receive business, that's the same with saying money. So that's what it's about. So people have to realize real quick that it, got, it has to go beyond just the creative aspect of music. We've been talking all night long now about music monitoring and tracking and analytics and all these wonderful things, but, but there's not enough talk about the business. There's not enough talk. And that's what Benjamin Academy is all about. It's about informing information about the business of music, about informing people that, hey, look, if this is an industry that you want to be in, you have to learn and study the industry, not the other way around where people feel like, well, I'm going to go in and do it my way. And they don't understand that this business was before you. There's tracks that was laid. So think about it. If, if I'm somebody that spent hundreds of thousands of dollars promoting my music, do you really think you're going to come along with $500 and surpass what I've done? I'm not going to let you. People aren't going to let you. You've got to pay your dues. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, man. You've got to take your time here because yep. I don't work too hard for this. I've been doing this for 20 years or 30 years, and I'm just going to let you just come along, and all of a sudden, you, you, you the man? It doesn't work that way. This industry will shut you down. It's a quick way to get blackballed is you have to be humble yourself and say, wait a minute, I'm willing to keep working hard and wait my turn. Just think about what I'm about to tell you. When I started DRT in 2011, you, I can't even tell you guys how many people said, you're going to lose a ton of money. Nobody cares about digital radio. Nobody's listening to these internet stations. They don't matter. They'll never matter. I've heard all of that stuff from tons and tons of people. Now, this is what you're not going to believe. And I'll say it here on this call. Half of those people, I mean, tons of people, a lot of them have called me and asked me for a job. Isn't that crazy right now? And say, hey, look, how can we be a part of what you're doing? How can we be down? How can we be involved? Like, Wait a minute. I thought you didn't believe in this. I thought you didn't think it was nothing. Here I am. Here I am. We, this is the start of our 10th year anniversary at DRT. 10 years later, we're still here in the middle of a pandemic and we're having a great year. And a lot of these guys are looking for jobs. A lot of these guys are, hey, you know what? That FM station they were so loyal to is not even around anymore. It went dark. There's layoffs happening left and right. And, and we love these people. Don't get me wrong. I don't wish anything on any of these people. But you got to open your eyes sometime. Don't be so quick to judge stuff because you never know. Because like I said earlier, what may not be good for one person is somebody else's. Hey, you know what? This is how I feed my family. It becomes a different thing. So I'll share this little story. A lot of people don't even realize that Mark Cuban, everybody knows who Mark Cuban is, right? Mm -hmm. On Shark Tank, you know, owner of Dallas Mavericks. Yep. Do you guys know how he became a billionaire? How did Mark Cuban make his money? This is what's not publicly talked about a lot. Well, I'm going to tell you on this call, and, and it's not an exclusive because you can Google it, but I'm going to say it in this call and let people know. Mark Cuban is a billionaire because of internet radio, because mm. of broadcasting. In 1999, he and his partners owned a company called Broadcast.com. If you mm. go and Google it, you can research this. They sold it for $5 billion. Mm. Mm. Time. This is 1999. Now think about it. 1999, there was really nobody thinking about internet radio. Nobody <laughs> thinking about it. It was something called podcasting. And, and, and it, the name still surfaces here and there. But it's basically internet radio. They had, I think they had 50,000 stations or something on this platform. He had one of the largest platforms out here. I think it was Yahoo, if I remember correctly. It, you know, they gave him $5 billion. It, it, they collapsed it. It doesn't even exist no more. Go, go put broadcast.com and see what you get. But you got billions of dollars that was circulated behind internet radio. In 1999, they saw something in it. They said, wait a minute, there may be something here, but it was too early. 
the rest of the people, when they took it over, they couldn't see the full vision. Imagine what that would be now if they would have stuck at it from 1999. It would have been just crazy. They would have probably had 250,000 podcasts on the thing and internet radio stations. But long story short, he became a billionaire from internet radio. So that's one of the things that motivated me. I go, wait a minute. Y'all can laugh about this thing if y'all want. I'm going to be the only company in the world tracking this stuff. And I'm going to say, hey, you know what? When somebody's ready to write billion dollar checks, he might just have my name on one of them. (laughs) That becomes a different story, right? Because it's not not just a faith move. I just told y'all that it already happened. And remember now, he had a website with stations on it. He had a directory. There's tons of that stuff now. Mm. We have a monitoring company. So it's a lot different. So, you know, again, these are things that drive us to say, hey, wait a minute. Just because people said, you know what, there's no. Look at Bill Gates with Microsoft. He was going door to door. Nobody wanted that software. People don't get it. They don't understand. What, what was Amazon with Jeff Bezos? What did it start off as a book? What was it, a bookstore? Book bookstore, yeah. Exactly. I, mean, get, I mean, come on now. So the, the people aren't paying attention to what's going on here. This guy's making billion dollars off of really, oh, they just really started recently, what, doing their own products. But they, they're making money off of everybody else's product. He just got yeah. like an, online, an online Walmart. I mean, you buy the damn thing on Amazon. Yep. But when you think about that, I'm being honest, Courtney, Ron, why the hell y'all ain't do it? Why didn't I do it? You see, mm-hmm. that's the problem is that we get in fearful because we say because something doesn't exist or we listen to all the naysayers around us. Man, oh, you know what, man, that Benjamin Academy ain't going to go nowhere. Man, there's a hundred schools out here. Oh, that digital radio tracker, man, they're monitoring stations. Ain't nobody listening to that stuff. Everybody's got something negative to say. But nobody's going to do like what we're doing tonight. Tonight, we're cheerleading one another. We're uplifting one another. We're empowering one another and saying, look, wait a minute. They can talk about us today like a dog, but tomorrow we're the ones writing the checks. It becomes a whole different animal. Like I said, I got stations that didn't even want to answer our email. Hey, can I'm in the beginning for the first seven, eight years of DRT? We didn't charge monitoring fees. We were begging the you know, station, look, man, we're going to monitor you for free. We just, you know what, can you, can you put our logo on your website? Just tell people about it, whatever, and, and we'll cut you on. And we did that for a while, for a long time. A lot, a lot of people didn't even return our email calls, nothing, man. Like, man, I don't even know what you're talking about. And a lot of those same people now are emailing and calling us saying, man, I want to get monitored. Man, you know, now there's a fee. We charge one twenty nine. It's a very, very affordable fee. I mean, it's like twelve dollars a month. I Man, you can't even buy a couple Starbucks for that. Yeah, for it. We keep everything very affordable. But now you say, wait a minute. You know, it's one twenty nine. But you had an opportunity to be grandfathered in for free, but you didn't believe. You didn't see the vision. You didn't. You didn't get it. You didn't understand what we've been talking about tonight. The benefits of all of this. So now. Some of them have even complained. They say, well, man, you reached out to me five years ago and four years ago and this, you know, well, that was then. You didn't, you didn't get on then. Now you got to pay. You want to be a chart reporter? It's $4.99. Mm-hmm. It's, it, you know, it's what it is. And that's what I talked about earlier, but you got to pay your dues. You got to understand if you want to get in something, anything, it's best to get at the ground level. Don't you wish you got into Bitcoin when it was six, seven thousand a coin? Now it's almost yeah. forty thousand a coin. Oh, I think about it every day. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All of these types of things. Look at what just happened with GameStop. Man, there's people, there was people throwing GameStop certificates away. Man, I don't even want that stock. Yep. And, and now they're <laughs> digging it out the trash can. Wait a minute, man. Hold on. I need to cash in on this thing. There's, right. there's so much more to life. And that's why I'm saying here on this call tonight that. Yeah, we're, we're kind of getting off subject here, but it's still translating to what we're talking about, building your brain, mm-hmm. believing in yourself, investing in yourself, understanding that you need to, to watch calls like this. You need to soak it up like a sponge. Get the knowledge from those that have been before you, those that are doing it, putting in the sweat equity, that's sacrificing, that's building. Because I tell people all the time, like, I'm nobody. I'm not no famous person. I'm not Jay-Z. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, none of these people. And I'm, I'm on the cover of t- 26 magazines. That's just crazy. I never even thought I'd be on the cover of one. 
But you see, that's what God will do if you keep putting your hands to work. You keep saying, hey, you know what? I don't care what other people are saying. I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm going to keep doing me. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep shouting and shouting until somebody out here hears my voice. And that's what this is about. It's about believing in yourself when nobody else believes in you. And it's about making moves, doing whatever you can. Something's better than nothing. Hey, if all you can get is 100 followers, then make sure there are 100 loyal followers. Make sure those 100 people are buying your merchandise, uh, streaming your music, buying your music, whatever it may be. Make sure they're engaged with you. I'd rather have 100 people engaged with me than a million fake followers that nobody cares about what we're doing. And that's what a lot of people are doing is they're going after these numbers because it looks good. Yep. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter if you're not, it's not, it's not, it's about being relevant. It's about making a difference. Even with your music, it's about making your music matter. So a lot of people aren't even thinking about this. Well, I just, I just cut 20 records last night. You know, I said, well, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? How many of them are you planning on making a hit? And then what is your plan to do that? And most of them will tell you, I don't have a plan. Or most of them want to pick up the phone and call somebody and say, can you do it for me? They don't want to get out there and push the train. As they say, get it moving. Everybody just wants to ride. Yep. You know, it's kind of like if you got the hottest car on the block, right? Everybody want to ride with you, but nobody want to help put gas in it. Nobody mm. want, it's that petrol. Nobody want to help you take care of it. Nobody want to help you wash it. But hey, you know what? You go do all that, Courtney. Hey, Ron, pick me up when you got it clean. See, yep. they're ready to ride because you got you done did all the work already. You got everything going. So that's what these artists that are watching this call, you got to open yourself up more. Look at those that are around you. Find out if you got people around you that just want to ride or you got people around you that want to work, that want to help yep. you build, that's not scared to put a little petrol in the car, that's not scared to, to you know, to break out the chamois and help you wash it. That's what we're about here at DRT. We're saying, wait a minute. You know what? We want to lead by example. We want to continue to create and be innovative and inspire people and say, look, if we can do it and we can build this, this brand and, and grow it in things from nothing, from an idea, what, what I told you guys in the beginning, it was like, it was just a software company software, a business software to try to be able to better serve our clients. That's all it was. And then now it's turned into a global monitoring company. We're, we're getting, we're building our brand. We're getting known all over the country, all over the world. People say, wait a minute, you know, I'm from over here. I'm from over there. Man, we got calls from, from South Africa. They tell my man, no, we're, we, we, we want to set up a, a DRT headquarters here for you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what in the world? Wait a minute. I, <laughs> I'm in Houston, Texas. You're talking about Africa. I, I never right. left the country kind of a thing. You know, it's, it's no, it's because people are seeing and they're saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, you're, you're leading by example, you're creating a voice, you're creating something because, see, they understand over there in Africa, there's a lot of music lovers, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of money in Africa, people don't understand, it. it's not a poor country, yeah. and, and things, they not, they're not paying attention, that they're saying, hey, wait a minute, we want to start getting our DJs, our radio stations, a bigger voice. And we know that some of these other gatekeepers, as they say, don't want to let them have a voice. So they say, well, wait a minute. You know what? Hey, you look a little like me. It becomes a little bit, it's taken a little differently. And it's saying, you know, wait a minute. We can turn around. How can we work together? How can we build something stronger? I say, you know what? Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of just the conversation of it. Because I wasn't even thinking about that. And that's why I shared that story to for your your viewers to be able to understand that sometimes we got to think out of the box sometimes we got to break away from our comfort zone and what we're used to and say wait a minute you know what hey if the united states is not feeling drt well you know what maybe we need to go over here and work africa a little bit we need to go over here and make some money and maybe come back to the united states and say hey wait a minute we've been here the whole time and that's why we were talking about earlier. It's called, you know, go where, go where they love you. Don't go where they hate you and try to make them love you. You can't buy love, right? You can, you can wine and dine a woman. You can take her out. You can buy her nice things and everything. 
But then at the end of the day, you say, you love me? He said, no. She's not feeling you. She's not feeling me. Thanks for the meal. That's right. <laughs> and keep it moving. And then you got to go on to the next one. You can't buy love. So at the end of the day, why do we try to do it? And that's what everybody's doing with their record. And just saying, hey, you know what, man? Uh, this record's hot, man. This record, hey, man, I can out rap this guy on the radio right now, man. Why are they not playing me and they playing him? It's not about that. Is quit trying to buy love because you can't man. buy it. You're preaching That's to the choir. Me, me and oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Me, me, and, me and Courtney literally had like hour long um, trainings in the group just about this alone. Nothing about music, nothing about business, just the psychology you have to have. And we're going to do, we're actually going to do a, a video, um, probably an ad video later on, pretty much kind of talking about where me and Courtney came from. We're not big, big names, but we've done things in the industry. I've done, of course, you've done a bunch of different stuff. Mm -hmm. I've done a bunch of different stuff as far as networks, HBO, MTV, VH1, Netflix, all that good stuff. So it's just like, but what we had to do to even get to that point. Like people don't, like you talked about before, I told Courtney, I tell the group this all the time, and I know it sounds terrible, but 98% of people that we talk to are not going to do what we tell them to do. That's just the reality of it. Everybody's not gonna make it. Not because this person is not better, not because this person is worse, but because the reason why I got here, not because I was the best producer, not because I was the best this or that, but I just outworked the mess out of everybody else. Everybody else was asleep. I was up at four o'clock in the morning, knowing I had to be to work at six, working on production, trying to figure, and I didn't even have my own laptop. I used someone else's, I borrowed someone yeah, else's laptop, brought it to my house, did it, and then gave it back to him before I went to work, no lie. And I'm gonna talk about that in the, uh, the thing that me and Courtney's gonna do. And Courtney got a, crazy story as well. So like you talk about putting in that sweat equity, a lot of these younger guys, I see I'm 34. So I kind of grew up when the internet was kind of starting, but it was, it wasn't real big, big yet. But it's just like putting in that work. I'm telling you, I got so many, you'll be like, and I'm pretty sure you got a story from where you came from too. But a lot of people are like, look, man, I got, I threw some stuff online. I put my video out there. I got a song on some random radio. I should be good. Right. Where's the money? I'm like, look, look, look. We actually had, me and Courtney actually had guys who pushed back on us when we told them they had to get their paperwork right. They pushed back. They was oh, like, man, I ain't gonna do all that, man. I'm just trying to do this. I'm like, all right, well, you got a hobby at this point. Exactly, well, the check's not just gonna show up in the mail, and that's what a lot exactly. of the guys think. Is, <laughs> they pushed back, why, and I was like, wait. And that's why we always say, focus on building the brand, the check will come. Yeah. The check, the check will show up in the mail if you put in your hands to work. See, and that's where a lot of people don't, don't understand. And what you don't know, you have to seek that knowledge. You got a lot of people, that's why I say around the music industry, that think they know everything. Yep. They yeah. haven't done nothing. And man, you know what? I, or they watch one video or they hear somebody say something at a conference. Okay, all of a sudden I'm a radio promoter. And you know what? Yeah. I asked them one question. I said, well, who do you know? See, if, if the music industry, it's not a who you know business. It's not. It's what you know to do with who you know. Everybody mm -hmm. knows somebody. Everybody knows somebody, but not everybody knows what to do with that person they know. So it's still applied knowledge. It's still applied knowledge. So I get people all the time. Like, I know this guy. I know that guy. I know somebody right now. My best friend's Michael Jordan. I said, well, is he going to invest in what you're doing? <laughs> I mean, I'm just being real with you. Yeah. You know, it, it, there's a billionaire. I mean, it's just publicly known. We can talk about him. You know, it's it's it, you know, I don't know that. You know, and that's what I asked him. I said, Well, does he he's your friend, but does he believe in you? Mm -hmm. And he started scratching his head. He said, you know what? Man, I, I, I don't even know. But you but 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 you hang out and you're good friends and all this, it's nothing to do with it. Is there's a difference between business and friendship. Just because you know somebody doesn't mean they're going to help you. Yep. It doesn't mean they're going to do, do things for you. It doesn't mean they're going to help you build your brand, help you to, hey, Ron, you need a new laptop? Here you go. I'm just going to give you one. See, it takes years of relationship for that. You know, to this day, and I'm proud to say it publicly, I get some of my friends just send me a check. They send a check and I'm like, what in the world are you sending me a check? I call them, what is this for? You know, because I'm thinking, well, you know, you want me to do something for you or something. They said, no, I just want to bless you. You're a good guy. You was, you know, you, you, you know, I see what you're doing. I want to help you. I just want to, it don't even matter. I don't want nothing back. 
I said, you know, I'm proud to say it took me years to get that point. I said, you know, wait a minute. I didn't understand it at first. I thought, man, is this, wait a minute. You know, what's going on? It's kind of like somebody gave you a check. You remember back in the day, you're like, man, I, do, I, do I run to the bank? Is this going to bounce? What is this about, right? <laughs> you know, you don't even know, right? Because remember now everything is digital. You don't really write no checks no more, right? You know, so you know the money's good when you see it in your account. You know, the Zelle, Cash App, all that kind of stuff. But, but to get a check, you know, what is, is this a joke? You, you see what I'm saying? But you've got to learn to think differently. And when people see that you're working and people believe in you, what you're doing, it's not about what you got. Think about what I'm about to tell you guys. You take one of the richest men in the world, Warren Buffett, gave a lot of his money to who? Bill Gates. Bill Gates. One, one, another one of the richest men in the world. So think about it. Why in the world would one multi-billionaire give another multi-billionaire a lot of money? Relationship. See, exactly. But not just, it's about the opportunity. Because, mm. because see, Bill Gates don't need money. He don't need no money. <laughs> but you see, you say, well, no, wait a minute. I, I want to be a part of what you're doing. Mm. I want to help mm. you. One of the most profound things I ever heard, this is going to sound crazy. I don't mind saying this on the video. Was And this is a public statement. It happened. Donald Trump, who was the president of the United States, he called Puffy Combs, you know, P. Diddy up. And he said, look, Whatever you're thinking about, count me in. Mm -hmm. I just want to be involved. And he said that before he became president. Right. The, the thing is, is that what people don't even realize is that he's he almost a billionaire. He don't need no money. You know what I'm saying? Had nothing to do right. with that. It had to do with people seeing you differently. Mm -hmm. people say, Wait a minute. You know what? I see what you guys are doing, Courtney Rock. I see what you're doing. That's why I was telling, you know, Ron, the start of this call, like, you know, hey, you know, if there's something I can do to help you guys grow what you're doing, count me in. That's not, money can't pay for that. That's a relationship conversation. That's a, hey, you know what? No, no, no. that's an empowerment conversation. That's not a, oh, okay, hey, you know what? Uh, Courtney, Ron, send me a check. No, it has nothing to do with that. It's just, hey, how can I add value to what you're doing? That's what we don't do to one another enough. Yep. But if you notice some of the examples I just gave you, they do it. So think about that for a minute. And see, that's how me and Courtney, that's how we linked up because in any other circumstance, me and Courtney would be enemies because we both were doing um, courses on music business trying to show people. So in any other case, we'll be competing, but we came together and now we're going to create something that hopefully later on will be, we're growing to something incredible based on the value that we're trying to add. Uh, we could easily be like, no, nah, I'm not working with him. We'll do my own thing and da da da. But like, no, nah, let's just, why? That's like me having a barbershop and then you having a barbershop right across the street. Why? Let's just yeah. put it together. Put our money together, split the bills. That's half the expenses. And we can, we can ride out like that. I did have a question though. So um, I, I wanted to get deep from an artist's perspective. So if I'm an artist and I got a, you know, a single that I want to get out and you know, I got all my paperwork done. Everything's good to go. <clears throat> Everything, my codes are embedded. Everything's good to go with. I'm ready to rock out. Would you suggest me going ahead and trying to get some promo and some radio play for the single um, based off of uh, what you guys do? Do you think uh, an artist should go ahead? Like, if, like for me, I'm trying to break an artist at this point. Should she go ahead and start working on uh, promo and radio spins off the single? That's a great question. Project? Um, to what extent, um, that's something I would take a little bit more than just this call. But the answer is yes. Um, let me tell you why. You can, you can never have enough marketing and promotion. Yep. You can never have enough branding. Um, you, know, in our, you know, I talk to artists all the time. You know, what, what can I do? I've already cut the album. I'm waiting on the label to drop it. You're being foolish. There's a million things you can do. It's kind of like go out here and kiss babies and shake hands and, you know, you want to continue to grow your fan base. That's what it's about. Build your movement. So if you're waiting on a label to come along and sign you, if you're waiting on this to happen, that to happen, you're already making a mistake. It's get out here and start marketing that music. Get out here and start building that brand. Get out here and start, hey, view one on that video. View, stream one on that song. Stream two, stream three continue to grow so you don't know while you're waiting on this big day to come 
you may be able to get 10,000 followers on social media. You may be able to get 100,000 streams. You may be able to achieve certain things that is setting a foundation up for that record, for that song, before that kit is made kind of a thing, right? Before that grand old day come that you've been dreaming about, that you're waiting on. Before that happens, there's a lot of work that goes in. There's a lot of work that goes in. There's a lot of money that's spent. There's a lot of development that takes place. So to answer your question, yes, if you've got something going on now, even if the record is not done, it doesn't matter. Start building that brand. Start building that artist. Start developing that artist. Start finding um, that niche, that fan base. Okay, well, this artist is similar to a, a, a Cardi B. Okay, Cardi B got 20 million followers. Let me see if I can get some of them to become followers of this artist. You got to start somewhere. You got to start building something so that as you begin to start releasing content, now there's a, a, a true market to be able to test it with. Is it viable or not? Now you're able to see, is this the record that we need to put $250,000 behind? But what a lot of people do is if they got the money, they say, well, let me just start spending money. Hold on a minute. Is this yeah. the right record? Is this, is this something worthy enough? Well, how are you going to tell that? It's kind of like having a focus group. You know, go get you 100 people. Hey, look, man, give me feedback. What do you all think about this record? Is it something you would stream? Is it something you'd buy? Is this an artist you would go see? Is it, would you buy merchandise? You know, what? Would you even sign up on this? Go look at this website. Would you sign up on this website? Would you even care? Would you go get feedback on it? Why? Because we're not the ones buying this stuff. So if you go ask 100 of these kids and they all telling you, man, that's whack as hell. I would never stream it. I wouldn't tell my friends about it. I wouldn't buy it. Why are you trying to invest in it? Go go to lab, go get another one. And if you don't believe them, 100 kids, go ask 100 more. And if you keep hearing the same thing, at some point, it's got to snap with you. I don't have one. Let me go back to the lab and retweak this. Let me do something. But the difference is you didn't spend a million dollars trying to figure that out. Right. Yep. I told a label the other day, man, go get a 